Private Internet Access is an awesome low-cost VPN service with unlimited data for just $2.91 a month. Grab yourself a copy today at the link below and start browsing privately. What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video and recently we checked out this video right here where I picked up a cheap drive from Amazon that was less than $30 shipped to my door. It was basically a refurb drive from an OEM laptop and we discovered a couple personal files on it but in that video there wasn't really too much on that actual system. There were some Windows installs and I guess if you want to find out more you can check that video that popped up there but all in all we were able to recover a little bit of files but more that video was all about reviewing a used hard drive off the internet and in that video I went ahead and said that uh, files were most likely accidentally left on the drive as usually they should go ahead and wipe them and then go ahead and sell them. However, for me, when it comes to making assumptions and comments about stuff, I do like to back them up with factual data. I like to test things for myself. I don't like just going on assumptions. And for the past few months since making that video, it has been a statement that's been going around in my head is, well, I assume that was the case, but in reality, is that actually what's happening with used drives on the internet? Did I just accidentally get one that missed the uh, wiping pile, or was this something that is a little bit more widespread? So. I jumped back on Amazon, bought another hard drive, and today we're going to try and recover some data off of a hard drive from the internet. And man, are the results absolutely crazy. If you thought last time what we were able to pull off that drive was crazy, this is just an another tire level. Now, full transparency and a little bit of clarity before we do get into this video. Uh, for me, I do always try and take as much caution when it comes to recycling data. So if there's anyone out there who's thinking about selling their old computer, getting rid of an old hard drive, or has chucked out an old hard drive recently, please link them to this video because uh, things do get absolutely crazy. On top of this, uh, I am a qualified IT technician. I have a degree in IT, almost finished my second degree as well so for me I have a fair bit of training when it comes to working through file management and I understand that kind of stuff whereas the end user may not have the level of skills and software available to them as I do also to work uh, in IT and thus have a number of um, recovery tools that maybe the end user either couldn't afford or doesn't have access to but we'll touch on what I actually use to recover stuff in just a moment so uh, for me personally again I am a qualified technician I do have degrees and qualifications and I have an absolute absolute passion when it comes to data and data recovery uh, and those types of things. So uh, do keep that in mind and hey, guess anyone out there watching from a data company, uh, hit me up. I really love this type of stuff. So anyway, uh, as I did mention, I went on Amazon, I just typed in hard drive and found uh, the cheapest option by sorting cheapest to most expensive. Uh, and this particular guy is from a seller called Dollarty Lover, I believe. I do apologize if I did miss that up. Uh, totally not dodgy at all. Looking at the rest of the stuff that they do sell, they seem to be just an basically everything seller. Whatever they can get uh, in terms of stock is what they sell. And for me, they did sell me a 160 gigabyte hard drive running at 7200 RPM. And what showed up was a 160 gig hard drive that ran at 7200 RPM. Uh, whilst they don't actually name what brand it is, it is is a Seagate drive. Uh, usually the sellers do this kind of thing because they're usually OEM drives and you're legally not supposed to sell OEM drives. However, the drive we did get here today is just a full standard desktop Seagate drive. So uh, anyway, uh, that is what we did get. Uh, and this time we did go ahead and actually get a full desktop size one as uh, I did have a little bit of problems with uh, other types of drives off the internet. So hopefully desktop ones will work. So it arrived at my door and unfortunately was already on its way out. Uh, unfortunately, it has this really bad clicking noise as we can see right here. And uh, it only seemed to work when it was on a 45 degree angle. So I either had to hold it and the scan took too long to hold. So I had to like prop it up on a 45 degree angle for it to work. If it laid flat, upside down, standing up anyway, uh, it just would not work. The drive would just click and clack and beep and bump and it just really wasn't bad. On top of this, the SATA power plug had also to had its right angle little plastic piece snapped off as if someone went and shoved the power connector in the wrong way and kind of just snapped it. Now, I don't know if that got snapped in shipping or that was 
something that happened in its previous life, uh, but all in all, it was a little bit disappointing to see that it was already basically DOA. I powered it up and it sounded like there was like a hamster inside of this thing with beeps and bobs and squeaks and squeals and that kind of stuff, so it was a little bit of a dilemma there, but all in all, once we got it working, I went to go ahead and start doing some recovery. Now, at this point in time, I had two different ways I could go about this. I could either A, go ahead and just use uh, free software that can be grabbed on the internet, or I could use my data recovery stuff from things like uh, Kronos and uh, OnTrack Data Recovery. Those kind of guys offer some really decent software that I personally use uh, for work and that kind of stuff. But I thought to myself, what if Joe Blow down the street goes ahead and buys one of these hard drives and they just go on the internet and find some recovery software? What could we pull off it before we switch to some very expensive software? So I typed in data recovery on Google. This guy came up as we found last time, which is the ease us to do US backup thing that looks a little sketchy, but seemed to work last time. So we'll go ahead and give it another shot right here. I installed it and we went to town and Ooh, things get interesting. So when it comes to recovering stuff, we found the kind of common things. I found a number of uh, movies and photos and pirated bits of content. There was some pirated music and stuff like that. Um, but things did get taken to an entire new level. Last time, again, we found some pictures, we found some movies, we found some stuff here and there, but there wasn't exactly a whole ton of data that I could get. This time is totally different. In total, I got about 155 gigabytes of uh, data that I was able to recover out of the 160 gigabyte capacity. And just as a side note, if you have a hard drive or any kind of storage, don't fill it up that high because you're going to be losing performance. But I was able to recover just about on 155 gigabytes worth of data and I could build a profile of the user, the uh, computer and a couple other bits and pieces around. So first up, let's see what kind of computer they were using. Now this thing came from a 2009 roughly machine that was running Windows 7 as its last operating system. However, it was upgraded from Windows XP Service Pack 2 and it looked like a custom rig uh, running an Intel hardware system. I couldn't track down what CPU motherboard or even video card it did have, but I was able to work out that it was an Intel system, was running Windows XP, then was upgraded to Windows 7. And uh, oh yeah, by the way, here's a picture of the computer. I only found one of these front on shots, but it seems to be the exact system that this guy came from as well, there was a number of these kind of front-on shots and also two desk shots that I did find in the system um, that sort of point to this being a computer. And I guess also too, before we go any further, um, what I'm going to show you is very, very limited and also too edited. So obviously personal information isn't spread throughout the internet as that is a bad thing. Um, I did find a lot more than what I can show you, but some of it we're just going to have to talk about because I really don't want to be showing you like credit card stuff. Oh, and also too, as a bit of a side note, I do apologize for using a camera camera and taking a photo of the screen, uh, mainly because the recovery software would crash every time I printed the screen, and because the drive was already on its way out, I didn't have a whole lot of time before it died. In fact, once it finished uh, scanning and I was sort of just digging through stuff, about an hour after it just died. So this drive is completely dead now, so if I was trying to do screenshots, it would have really gone downhill. Again, my apologies for that, uh, we're just going to have to roll with the pictures of the screen. Anyway, back to the actual computer itself, so it was a custom rig that was used around that 2009 time is that some of the earliest entries that I could find in that computer um, that said there could have been earlier files that have just not been recovered or erased or something like that or overwritten uh, but seems to be around 2008 2009 timing is when this system was either built or the earliest records found so that was the PC profile and yeah we can track down what kind of computer it was that's a little bit creepy but man things get a lot better. So the actual user itself or herself, the user seems to be a female who's around her mid to late twenties, dark hair and had between three and five brothers and sisters, all appearing to be younger in the photos. She liked hypercars, exotic cars with a number of videos saved of those particular things and also two photos. And I have to say some of those uh, cars are not too bad. I do like cars myself and I do agree with those uh, that she did like. She also too appears to have gotten into our uh, computer computers and studying computers, which seems to be the reason why she's using this computer. She first appeared to go ahead and get a qualification for a vocational education program in, I'm going to butcher this town, province, whatever, uh, Gangdong, uh, China, focusing on technology and possibly also to programming, as there is a number of screenshots and also to games based on programming and programming fundamentals. And also too, there was a number of PC logics and, um, and all kind of gates that were also to be found in the system system, really pointing towards someone who was studying programming and 
logic of a system. Big thumbs up for me, that is something I like to see. So after going ahead and getting the vocational education, they then relocated to Gaolo, Gaolo, Nanjiang, China, and attended the Nanjiang Adult University to study what appears to be uh, more in-depth programming and also to technology, possibly obtaining a new computer around this time as there was a photo for an iMac listing and then I also too found pictures of uh, what seems to be a new computer. Now unfortunately I couldn't get those pictures of the new computer because they were really really small and seemed to have uh, credit card information on the screen. So it looks like they bought a new iMac when they did move out to go to this university. Now on top of this they also do work for a media company or I should really say she worked for a media company as either an editor or animator as on top of the um, learning materials that were already on this computer there seemed to be a lot of animation and video type assets. Now I can kind of uh, work out that she seems to be a student rather than a teacher because all the work that I could actually find on the computer had the same uh, what appeared to be name. I'm a, I don't read Chinese uh, but the same characters kept appearing at the top of all the documents and when I use like the Google Translate picture viewer thing it seemed to be a name uh, so it does look like they were studying rather than a teacher. They were also too into a number of games as there was a ton of different game files on this computer from things like Civilization to racing games to even things like Call of Duty. So they were into tech, they were into gaming, programming. This person sounds really, really cool. Now, I was also too able to up uh, discover other things like credit card information, buyer's information, unfortunately, account logins. Uh, it seems to be a lot of people just store stuff in plain text, which is really unfortunate to see and kind of gets a little bit crazy when someone on the other side of the world can buy a drive off Amazon completely legitimately and then recover all of this data. Now at this point in time, the sort of paper trail kind of goes cold. It seems she moves to a university, but there's nothing really more saved to this system. And that's really where it points to a new computer. Again, as I did mention, it looked like she got an iMac, but at the same time, there was also to some pictures and also to notes that were referring to an iPad Air. So I don't know whether there was a university grant or the university got a new system for her or something along those lines, uh, but it seems to be at this point, the computer, the desktop that that drive was in unfortunately kind of just wasn't used anymore and then this is where it ends up at my point now it was a little bit hard to work out how on earth it went from an old computer that was used in the college to now being in my room but it seems to be that the uh, person either went ahead and recycled it sold it or gave it to some sort of charity that did some sort of uh, computer recycling as in the area of where that person lived as there was location data on that computer still uh, it seems to be there was a number of PC recyclers uh, and I'm guessing she either sold them or just gave it away or something like that and that's how it ended up getting recycled and then sent over to me but damn that is a lot of information off of a seemingly unsuspecting blank drive from Amazon or really just the internet in general now again to be clear I tried to keep this data as uh, broad and as general as possible there's a lot of people that go to that university there's a lot of people in China in general so uh, the likelihood of even me trying to find this person is very very low and just to be clear the photos that are on the screen or that I did show had the originals edited so not even I have that data anymore because the recovery or the drive failed I didn't actually recover any files I just took photos of it and edited those original files so for even me I don't have the original information anymore those were not backed up there was no copies made also too by the time of actually releasing this video that drive would have been smashed by a hammer so there is no chance of ever getting this data back any further and there's definitely a lot more information than just what I was able to build the profile of this person uh, again as I did mention there's credit card numbers there was account logins I think at one point I may have seen a bank account uh, but again I don't have that information to go back and verify again I've edited all the originals so I don't know what's going on here I think there was a passport at one point and again there was a lot of pictures of the user and all also to what appears to be siblings, family, or younger friends. I don't exactly know what relation they all had to each other, uh, but they were all in a lot of photos together and also to a lot of individual photos that were all together. So uh, for full clarity, full transparency, no, I've not made any copies of this data. The data has been destroyed by the time this video has been released and any data collected, the original copies were edited and overwritten the older version. So I, even I don't have a copy of that data 
data anymore. And no, this information has not been shared anywhere. The computer doing the recovery wasn't even connected to the internet. Uh, there was no way of sharing this data any further. And that's sort of where it comes to an end and comes to a little bit of a PSA part of this video. If you or anyone you know has sold a hard drive or is selling a device that stores data, even something like a tablet PC or anything like that, just remember, it is very easy to recover this type of information. Again, I was able to find out a lot about this person and I use free stuff from the internet. I didn't even have to pay to get any of this data back. And in this modern world, data can be very, very worthwhile for a lot of people out there. Sure, this drive, the latest entry or the last entry was around that 2010 time, so it has been sitting around on a shelf for a long time. But if you sell a drive and then someone buys it and then quickly does some recoveries, they could get a lot of information about you that is still relevant and uh, do some serious damage. So do keep in mind, data is very, very important. If you have a whole old hard drive rather like this guy, put it on a shelf and do not throw it away. Smash it with a hammer, put the little smashings in a bag and put it on a shelf. Do not throw the drive away. It is just so important that we keep our data safe. Even if the drive was technically formatted, so when I got this drive, it was blank. So when I plugged it in the computer, there was nothing on the actual drive itself. You did need to recover it. Uh, but as a lot of us do sort of know more and more these days, just because you've deleted something doesn't mean it's actually gone. And today was a very good example right here. And for me, that data was very easy to recover. Sure, if you were just a general user at home, you may have a hard time trying to decipher where things go and uh, file structures and how they all relate to each other. But simply, it wasn't that hard. And sure, I might have a degree in IT, but at the same time, wasn't a very hard thing to go ahead and work out. So guys, please keep your data safe and let me know down in that comment sections where you're expecting me to be able to recover that much data uh, because that is absolutely crazy. For like $19, I basically know about someone on the other side of the world. And this person seems to be pretty cool though, really into tech. And uh, I have to give a big shout out to this person. I don't know who they are. I guess I could try and contact them, but that'll be kind of creepy. But all in all, damn, that's kind of cool to see how much they were into tech. But guys, do let me know down below if you're interested in these kind of tech forensics, technology, archeology span kind of thing, do let me know down below. I'd love to do some more of these kind of videos in the future, uh, just buying random drives off the internet and seeing what we can actually find on them. Uh, do let me know if you like this kind of idea. Guys, thanks all for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.